so many sewing machines. Oh, so it needs a key. It doesn't have a key. It's one of my greatest loves and one of my greatest regrets. I know that I shouldn't pick favourites. So there really isn't a good way to show off this sewing machine. The pedal actually for where the fabric sits is really weird and interesting. Ew, is that mould? Yeah, no, my memory's gone at this point. I've got no idea what this one is. Hello guys and welcome to Annabelle and Ben's Antics. And as you can see, if you've been with the channel a while, we have recently moved. And part of that moving means that we've had to pack up all of our collection of sewing machines. So while I was packing them up, I decided to film an up updated sewing machine tour. How many have we got? Honestly, I don't know, but we're about to find out. Editing Annabelle here, and I just need to clarify two things. The first is that you are going to be seeing all the machines in order from oldest to newest, not necessarily the order that I filmed them on, but I thought it was the order that you guys would appreciate them the most. Secondly is that all these machines, some of them are disgusting, all of them, bar one which I mentioned in the video, gets cleaned and that is the whole reason I was going through them, but I didn't bother to show you guys the cleaning process because otherwise this video would have been longer than it already is. And looking at the timestamp, I think you're in for quite a ride. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Case is a little bit stained, but meh, we don't really care. I really like this design. I don't know why, it just makes it feel very Greek. The serial number for this is P870906. This one is another one with those really long spindly bobbins. I can't remember if this one sews or not. I think she does, but it's certainly not a machine that I really used all that much. She is a little stiff if I'm honest. Probably needs an oil which is absolutely fine. Very dirty in there with a key. A broken key. She is definitely gonna need a clean before we travel with her because she has literally got like mud inside which is a shame. Probably why she is so stiff as well. She's got quite a plain faceplate. I don't think she's that old. That mud is giving it quite a nice smell as well. No, she's good. She's adorable. She's cute. I really like this design. It's one of my favourites. It was one I was hunting for for ages before I found her. 90% sure this one came from Orinoco as well. A lot of these machines did because they have been a continuous source of, here Annabelle, we found this machine and you're gonna really, really love it and then I give them money. This Singer 28K is from 1901, which is way older than I thought it was for some odd reason, but I am so pleased that I found it and this decal design is something that I was hunting for for ages and I'm so pleased that it finally belongs to me. Also, I'm going to apologise now for the entirety of filming this video. I completely forgot what a shuttle bobbin was called. Please, please forgive me. I was literally packing up my house while I was moving this and so my brain cells just went elsewhere. So I think this one definitely takes the cake for most beautiful case, even though it is an imperfect condition. All of the sides are carved, it is utterly beautiful, the detail is amazing. There's a few paint splatters on it, one corner looks like unfortunately it has rotted a bit. Ben did say he thought he might be able to get something to repair that with, at least make it so it doesn't get any worse. So this one actually has the same decals as Ben's machine does, but I think this one is a little bit older. It does turn nicely, but honestly she's a little stiff, probably just because she hasn't really been used. None of these machines have been used in at least about a year because we haven't been able to take them to our house because we live in a tiny home and there is very limited space and also because we haven't really had access to the storage space for the last six months. However, she is beautifully detailed. The decals on this one are definitely in much better condition, however there is some rust on the plates. She too has these very thin bobbins which, why have I forgotten what they are called? This is ridiculous. I Like sewing machines are my thing, I should know what they are called but I can't remember off the top of my head and it's been one of those days so we're just going to leave it. This machine is another one that I really want to do more with. It's such a shame that we have brought these machines and we just haven't been able to use them. It's something that definitely needs amending and I'm actually after my next machine because I need to get one when I move so that I have something to work with. After that we're not going to be getting any more machines for a while because we need to make the most of what we've got even if I'm not going to be seeing them for several months because stuff takes a while to get there when you're moving around countries. The serial number for this one is R587451. This sewing machine is a Singer 28K from 1902. 120,000 of these machines were made between July and December in Clydebank, Scotland this year and I brought this machine in about 2020 for £15 off the Facebook marketplace.
This machine with the yellow case is actually Ben's machine. It is the first machine he brought himself and I was super proud of him for doing it. He actually found this in the Wood Green charity shop in Banbury. I can't remember how much we brought it for, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in my other video. So someone's obviously painted the outside. They've also put these lovely flower stickers on. This one, again, decals are a little bit warm, but is in really good condition. It's slightly smaller than my other machines, which I quite like. And she also sews absolutely beautifully. I've actually got the back facing to you guys, so let me just switch through this round. She does so just absolutely beautifully. We can see that she was at one point serviced by Kent Home Sewing Machine Services, which I actually have seen a couple of stickers for similar servicing things where people would come out to people's homes and do the service that way. Particularly with this one, the metal plating that she has is engraved and it is absolutely stunning. The decals also very, very beautiful and in reasonably good condition. They're not perfect by any shop, but they are good enough that we can see what they are and appreciate the artwork, which does anyone know who designs Singer's sewing machine decals? Because I actually don't, and this is now something that I think I want to want to figure out. Her little accessory box is really cool because the lid actually slides off. In here, we've got quite a lot of original accessories. Some of these, I really don't know what they are, like this thing. Anyone know what this is? Because honestly, I ain't got a clue. Same with this one. Absolutely no idea what that does. We have some spare needles. I mean, look, if nothing else, I think with all my sewing machines, there is one thing that I am never going to need again. It is to buy sewing machine needles. And this one, again, no idea what it is. If anyone knows, please tell me. I think we got particularly lucky with this machine because she comes with so many accessories and some of them do look to be reasonably unusual. One thing that me and Ben are really wanting to do is actually to take the years that the machines were made and make outfits from those years using these machines. Her serial number is F185 5181. This Singer hand crank sewing machine is from 1911 and it is a model 28k. There was 90,000 of these machines made that year in Clydebank, Scotland. And I also want to say that if you guys do get a machine, please do not paint the box yellow. It really does encourage mould and damp and as much as this looks lovely, it is probably something that me and Ben are going to try and strip off in the future to restore it to its original glory of a solid wooden case. <laughs> So this is my blue Singer sewing machine treadle. It is one of my greatest loves and one of my greatest regrets. The regret being that the first time I used the treadle it broke. Love being the fact that I have never seen a machine like this before and even going online I can only find like three pictures of them and no information. However, in the video where I unboxed this on my channel someone actually told me this machine, because when I got it off them they told me that it was from the 1950s and that it had been brought brand new. The thing is the serial number dates back to the 1930s which was a bit odd especially when they're like, oh yeah, we brought it from a proper singer shop and it's the first thing that my mum brought when she immigrated to the UK and she's been using it for years. According to this person in my comments, though I haven't been able to find any other sources to verify it, the blue paint is because black paint was actually quite hard to come by after World War II that, to recover cast irons with. And essentially what Singer was doing was buying back old machines and refurbishing them and reselling them, but the ones that they refurbished and resold were painted in blue because they couldn't get the black paint due to the war. Which to be honest actually makes a lot of sense and though I can't verify that this is correct, it is certainly a reasonable explanation for the odd colour and also why you don't see a lot of them because there's no one kind that was made this way it's just that whatever thing get their hands on they refurbished painted this lovely for fluorescent blue added back the decals that they'd originally had on it and then sold on. I don't know if this is true or not, if you guys can find me any sources to confirm or deny this, I would really, really appreciate it, but that's the story I'm going with for now. And this machine, she sews. She sews really, really nicely, but she just needs a new cabinet. I've actually got all the parts for her old cabinet, so we threw away the wood that was all rotting, but we traced out the pattern so that we could essentially remake it. We made sure to keep all the pieces of her treadle base, and actually this is another thing, is someone pointed out that the singer didn't actually sell cabinets with wooden treadle bases, but during World War II when times were tough and they couldn't essentially get the cast iron that they needed to make new bases, they'd refurbish them any way they could, including, I believe, doing wooden treadles sometimes if they couldn't get all of the pieces. So we've kept as much of the old cabinet as we can and we are going to box it all up and take it with us. It's going to be one of Ben's first job is remaking a treadle cabinet for this. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I think this is going to be fantastic. This machine, like I love blue, blue is my favourite colour and this machine is just everything that I would want and she sews really nice and she is really nice and we will get you working again. I'm so sorry that I broke your cabinet but to be fair it was so rotted we probably couldn't have taken it with us anyway. Her serial number by the way is F3 
997-697-695. So this blue cast iron Singer sewing machine was made in 1913 and I don't think I actually mentioned what model it was, so it is a 15k made up in Clydebank, Scotland. I brought this for £150 off the Facebook marketplace and honestly that is more than I would like to admit I paid for it, especially considering that the table that went with it did not survive for very long after it arrived. I also want to emphasise again that my theory about it being a recover is just theory at this point and I have no evidence to back it up, however it is something that I am currently looking into, so any advice of where to look or any information that you guys could provide, please leave it in the comments down below, it'd be really really helpful and I'm really intrigued about this machine. Another unusual thing that I noticed about this machine is this face plane is actually a blank one, whereas the one on the back is fully engraved. Now this is really odd because if either of them are going to be blank, it would probably be the one on the back, not this one on the front. So my presumption here, if this is a refurbished machine, is that this is not the original face plane, this was actually just a plane replacement that they had in the factory because the original one was too damaged for the refurbishment. Which again I think backs up the theory that this is a refurbished sewing machine. But what do you guys think? Certainly it's quite an unusual one in the collection, no matter where it's come from. Now here's the thing, I know that I shouldn't pick favourites, but if I had to get rid of all my vintage sewing machines and just keep one, I think it would be this one, and this is my Hexagon machine, which I actually did unbox on the channel, and it is amazing. <laughs> now, Hexagon is really interesting, so they were an independent sewing machine company, however their sewing machine design was really, really good, so Singer actually brought out the Hexagon company and then used their machine design to essentially make their own Singer sewing machine. I can't remember which model they turned it into. So this is essentially a Singer before it was a Singer. The decals are incredible. I love it. I really struggle to find any photos of Hexagon sewing machines online. I don't think they're very common. Certainly the company only existed for 10 years in the UK and this one is a beautiful example of their work. She sews and runs absolutely gorgeous. And the design on it, I think, is better than any of Singer's because a lot of Singer's, they're very gold without a lot of our colours in. This one has at least four different colours that I can just see at a glance and the details are amazing! The case is a little bit beaten up but that's kind of what the point of the case is. The actual machine itself is in really really good condition. There's basically no rust on any of the plates and all of them have this gorgeous gorgeous engraving in. I also just realised that this screw on the top is actually in the shape of a hexagon which I feel like they have done on purpose so points. You get extra points for that. I got this one off the Facebook marketplace and I think I paid £15 for her? But they'd essentially just been using her as a display piece, which, fair play, she's beautiful, but she can do so much more and I have plans. I have plans for all my machines, but particularly I have plans for this one. We're gonna get you somewhere really nice, aren't we? And you're gonna be one of my main machines. Also, it's only now as I'm going through all of my sewing machines that I realise I have way more than I thought, and I said I had a problem at the beginning of this video, but oh my gosh, I definitely have a problem. This is um something I might need to fix. Mm, I could just listen to that sound all day. Her serial number is X11571. And one of my favourite things about this machine is that in the case she actually comes with her original booklet, which again, these are hard to find, it is not in great condition, but at least it is there. This cast iron hexagon hand crank is just amazing and yes, it is kind of one of my favourite machines, even if I shouldn't choose among my babies. The hexagon company only existed for eight years between 1916 and 1924 and unfortunately, even though it does have a serial number I can't date it any more precisely than that because it just doesn't seem like any kind of database for the serial numbers actually exists or at least I can't find one. If you guys know of somewhere I can check please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise I just want to talk for a moment because this machine is beautiful and I want you to see all of its amazing and really unique decals. Whoever designed this was an absolute genius and honestly I think this is the most beautiful machine that I own. Not only is it incredibly functional but I want this to be my main hand crank machine when we do finally set up my dream sewing studio. So so this one is going to be sticking around for quite a long time. So there really isn't a good way to show off this sewing machine, are you wondering what I'm doing Shirley? Because currently we are mid packing and it is in a corner behind a door where there is boxes directly behind it 
and one of those things. So I'm just gonna lay on top of it because this is the only way I could talk about it where you could still see it. Sure looks like I haven't seen this thing in ages. Now this machine was actually Ben's birthday present to me this year. It cost us 75 pound. It was originally up for sale for about 300 pound, I think. And it was up for ages and it just wasn't selling. It was about a three hour drive away. I messaged her going, look, I got 75 quid. No, it's ridiculous offer. And she went, if you can pick it up today, you can have it because it was gonna go in the bin. And I'm like, hell yes, we will be there in three hours. And we drove there and we were there in three hours and we then got it home and me and Ben started fiddling with it. It needed some repairs done and I actually have been raising money to get those repairs done on my Ko-Fi. Unfortunately, we didn't meet our goal, so it hasn't really been repaired. I've started doing a few things on it, but it's not particularly functional at the moment, which is fine. It doesn't mean it can't be functional. Now the case itself is utterly amazing. It's all hand carved. There is some missing bits and pieces, but we actually have most of them that are in a little bag. It just needs them gluing back on, which Ben said that he can do. The actual machine itself is a Lotus design and this is one of the reasons that I got rid of my two Lotus machines that didn't have bases is because I got this one and this one is in much better condition and it is much nicer. Also yes I am laying on top of an antique. This is how we do videos guys. Appropriate? No. Functional? Yes. Now the person who originally owned this actually used to be a seamstress on a farm. She essentially just used it all of her life until she passed away. Her kids inherited it and they're the ones who sold it to me. So I believe this machine has actually only had one owner. If I get off the top we can unfold her and have a look at what she She's like, so one of my favorite features is this door here, which actually contains the wheel for the treadle. We also have this button and this button actually takes the belt for the attaches the sewing machine to the wheel off. So if you hold that down while you're pedaling, it will all disconnect for you and that's utterly amazing. This bit here does not open and this is where the sewing machine is. Down here, we also have the pedal. Rather than flipping up, this one actually slides. Ta-da! The serial number for this machine is F7980399. She is in beautiful condition. There are a couple of bits and pieces of rust here and there on the metal plating. It does actually have wheels, but the wheels are weird because they only roll one way. These are the broken bits of wood carving that we're gonna try and stick back on and repair. If not, we might be able to use these to cast more and hopefully just get it all sorted. Oh yeah, so this is why we took all the pieces out and it's because they were really, really dirty and preventing it from sewing properly. So this machine is actually a Singer Model 6. 66k and it is from 1917. The design is lotus and the cabinet is beautifully carved even if it is a bit damaged. Now this machine is going to have a whole video once it is fully repaired about all the bits and bobs me and Ben did with it because oh my gosh the hardware needed a complete overturn which is one of the reasons that even though we have been working on and off on it for over a year it's still not complete. However it's beautiful and honestly it is the pride and joy of my collection now. I think this might actually be my favourite treadle that I own. Maybe even even more so than my boot patcher, though to be fair they do two very different jobs for two very different things. Either way, I got incredibly lucky with this one, I mean just look at her and by the way, both me and Ben agreed on giving her the nickname of Lizzie. So this machine is one of my favourites. It is an industrial boot patcher made for making shoes. I got this beauty off of a guy who used to make the lining boots for the Olympic skiers. And if you've been to the Olympic sea of skiing or snowboarding, in the last 10 years, your boots have likely been made on this machine. And it is amazing. She's one of the most expensive machines. I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it, but I will put it just here. However, unfortunately, I just haven't been able to use her. She is a very large and very heavy machine, and when we've been living in our tiny home, though this was the one machine I insisted that I wanted to take with us, it just didn't happen, which is a really big shame. She sews so, so nicely and comes with an entire drawer full of accessories with oil, needles, like a ridiculous amount of sewing needles that is just one pack the whole reason me and ben decided to buy her is because we had visions of making leather armor which we still really really want to do but leather is expensive and this machine was expensive and because we haven't had ready access to this machine it's just not something that we've gone pursuing just yet however when we eventually get our workshop this one is definitely going to be taking pride of place here's the serial number it reads f91 Four zero one six three. You can see on the plate here, though it is a bit dark, that she's a 29k and I love the single crest that she has, it is just so beautiful. And though the paint on the end has worn off probably from just plain old use, the detailing on this is absolutely fantastic. Really it's amazing that they went to so much effort to make an industrial machine, so beautiful. She also has a full treadle base which I absolutely love, it is utterly amazing and works like a dream. So this machine was made in 1919 in the Singer Clydebank Scotland factory. It was one of only 
12,000 made between July and December that year, and though I mentioned that I had brought it from the Olympic ski in a soul bloke, he had actually had it for 15 years, but before that he actually told me that it only ever belonged to one woman, who, as it happened, brought it home from work when her factory job closed down, and it is the machine she used to use while she was working doing he wasn't quite sure what, but I thought that was a cool bit of history that she essentially stole it from a closed down job, probably instead of a last paycheck considering how much these things were worth at the time. If you were smart enough to notice that this machine actually wasn't doing any stitches while all that b-roll was running, it is because I have run out of a bobbin thread and I am too lazy to replace it right this second. Also just saying, she has not been used once in at least six months at this point and she still runs as smooth as the day she was made, so I'd say that is a win. Oh, so many sewing machines. Yeah, no, my memory's gone at this point, I've got no idea what this one is. Oh, so it needs a key. It doesn't have a key. It's fine. One minute, let's see if one of these other keys work. Honestly, who thought it was a good idea to lock these goddamn boxes? Oh, that might be why. I think the key has broken off and is now stuck inside. I suppose that's going to be a thing. Thing is, I'm pretty sure these keys would fit if there wasn't a thing actually in there already. We're not going to look inside this one, but admire the case. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> So though we were unable to open this case, I do actually remember what machine this is, though not the year or the model, but Ben is fairly confident it is from 1927 because his memory is a lot better than mine. However, I brought this one for the decals, which is this Egyptian Sphinx kind of pattern that I am showing here of lots of other beautiful sewing machines. I hope that I can get the key out of the box, this is a later me problem, I'm definitely not getting rid of this one as I had been looking for a machine with these decals for ages before I finally managed to buy one. I am 90% sure this does sew but I'm honestly not entirely convinced that I ever actually tried it. <laughs> So this sewing machine is one that I'm actually really upset I didn't manage to film a video for. I had plans for it, I was going to do my checkered blue skirt to go in my checkered blue top. However, I've just run out of time and it has to be packed today, so that's what we're going to do. And this one, my friend Emma actually found at an auction house. She messaged me saying, oh, if I can get it for like under 20 bucks, would you want it? And I was like, yeah, definitely, go for it. She got it for 10 and then she took it home and decided she wanted to keep it and then was like, oh, it's fine, I'll lend it to you for a video. Except then I offered her an exchange for her Benina, which I did do a video on. That was, went down well, but if I ever want to get rid of this, I have to give it back to her. And this is probably the smallest little hand crank I have ever seen. It is bright orange, which I love. He did try it, I haven't tried it, unfortunately. So it does sew, it does skip the odd stitch, so it probably needs looking at minorly. Oh, it's just so cute. Ah, it moves so nicely. So this machine is actually from the Soviet Union. You can see right here it says made in the USSR. At this time I have no idea how old it is so I'm going to do some googling when I'm editing this video and I'll see if I can put some more information over the b-roll. We do have a little compartment here which sadly has nothing in. It does have a bobbin under here I believe but it needs screws to take out and like I said we're trying to pack these up so I'm not going to go into too much detail today. Foot pedal goes up and down. The pedal actually for where the fabric sits is really weird and interesting. I'm not sure why it's like that. We have a little bit of chipping to the paint but mostly it's really really good. It is a little bit dusty so I'm just going to give it a quick run over with sewing machine oil before I put it in its box and then put it in a big box ready for the move. It's so adorable. I love this. I need to get a name for it though. I need a good strong Russian name. I've just been watching Yuri on Ice so I'm tempted just to call it Victor. I think we're going to call it Victor. Hi Victor! You're welcome to my collection! And one of the reasons I did insist on me keeping this was not because I wanted to keep it, I was actually perfectly happy to do a video and then give it back to Emma, but this one Ben decided that he definitely needed in his life which is funny because he doesn't really use hand cranks, if he does use a sewing machine it's normally an electric one. If there were a prize for cutest machine in my collection, this one would definitely take it with ease. It is actually adorable and like I said, though I haven't tried it, I have very high hopes that this is going to be a cute little machine that we can keep out all the time just for those little jobs that may need doing. The decals are in immaculate condition and the colour of the overall machine is bright orange so it matches my hair. Plus it's kind of cool to own a machine that was made in a country that no longer exists. So this machine is one that I convinced Ben to buy me on the basis that it would be his machine. Is it his machine? Debatable. However, it is his machine and it is one of my few electric cast iron singers. One of my few. I think it is my only. It comes in a really good case. It's very solid. We actually found this in a shop. Basically, it's this really weird shop that's no longer open, which wonder why when I explain it to you. It only opened for three hours 
on one day a week. So for three hours on a Saturday, the shop front would open and essentially they were a company who went in and cleared out dead people's homes. I actually got several sewing machines from them and this was my first and probably best find. Oh look, we've got the pocket that Nani made Ben. Keeps this in here so that when he's working on it, he can attach this to his belt and keep all of his sewing goodies inside. Okay, so let's get this puppy out. And starting with the foot pedal, I think the foot pedal is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It literally is the shape of a foot. And it's a singer on it, which I utterly love. The foot pedal just protects all the paint work. We do wrap it up in a microfiber cloth when it is inside. Now the other thing to note with this machine is that we actually have this cute little drawer that's in the accessories box. We have the singer manual in English, we also have it in German, and then we have so many attachments in here, it is actually ridiculous. What is this thing guys? Please tell me what this does. Then if we take a look at the actual machine, she is one of the most beautiful that I own. So to start off with, she's missing her felt circle, so I actually cut a hole in some silk that I had and I've just been using that instead. I don't know if silk is better or worse than felt, but it was just what I had to hand at the time, so she's been living with it ever since. The decals on this machine are immaculate. It genuinely doesn't look like it's worked a day in its life, though I'm pretty sure it has just because there are a couple little scratches kind of around this area that indicate pins have likely gone over it. The light and the motor still work absolutely perfect. And we do have a couple of little accessories in the drawer. We have a bobbin winder. This one is the traditional circular bobbin and this awesomely engraved plate just here, which is one of my favorite features. Getting unique needle plates is just amazing. She has a serial number of Y9888338. She is a little bit dusty because she has been in storage for several months. However, we love her all the same. This electric singer 99K is from 1935 and it was one of 20,000 made that year in Clydebank, Scotland. We brought this for £25 in 2021 and it has been Ben's main electric machine. If you want to see it in full action, please check out the pocket video that he did because that way you'll be able to see exactly how he normally uses it. I did ask him if he had any opinions on how this machine ran as honestly I haven't used it all that much and the only thing he said that he wasn't overly keen on is that the foot pedal is very sharp, it changes speed very quickly and with very little pressure but at the same time it's kind of stiff so you're either going at a snail's pace or you're sprinting towards a black hole. Other than that though this machine is in immaculate condition and definitely one of the best in our collection. Okay, so this is the next machine. I think this is the first one that I ever brought, because I'm honestly not 100 percent sure that you can see this other machine in the background and it's sat on top of another treadle. I have a problem, I am aware. Look, if I had to have an addiction, at least it's like practical, though I have more than I need for a practical use. Yes, yeah, so this is the first vintage sewing machine that I ever brought. I got this when I was a young teenager for 50 pounds off gumtree and i went there to buy like a mini machine which i almost wish i had because these full size ones are actually really easy to come by but the mini ones are not and it frustrates me that i had the opportunity and did not take it but she is in pristine condition absolutely gorgeous all the decals are immaculate she has a serial number of ea1968472 obviously she's a singer and this is the machine that made Ben fall in love with vintage sewing machines because I showed him it and he was like, oh my god, we need more, which not going to disagree with. She sews absolutely beautifully and in her compartment she does have an instruction book. Now the instruction book is not for the sewing machine. The lady who I brought this off of just had several random instruction books and she just gave me one so I get an idea of how it was used. There's some spare bobbins, needles, sewing thread in there so we can move that all in there. It does make me sad that when I was a teenager I just didn't use this as much as I had planned to. This is the first machine, like not just first vintage machine, this is the first sewing machine I ever brought myself and I have maybe used it about 10 times total which is a real shame because she deserves better and we are going to do better. So when me and Ben eventually get a studio we have literally designed an entire thing to make sure that all of the vintage sewing machines are easily accessible, easily usable so that we can use them to create more videos and content. We have a whole bunch of ideas but unfortunately it's just not something we can practically do at the moment. This is also one of the few cases that actually has a key which I think is really awesome. This Singer sewing machine was made in 1935 in the Scotland Clyde Bank Singer factory. It is a model 66k which was sold in a round wooden box which I really prefer to the square ones I just think they look a little bit nicer and it was one of 30,000 made that year. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.
Now, this one's going to be a little bit tricky to show you guys, so my apologies. If you want to see close up, have a look at my last video, but this is a cabinet treadle machine. It's a little bit similar to the one that Emma got. It has the same kind of sliding out things. We've got an entire box here of Singer accessories. We have lots of bobbins. Unfortunately, a lot of them are rusty. This is a machine. I got it, and a week after I brought this, we moved into our tiny home, and I couldn't take it with me. We have the original booklet for it as well, which is super cute. Looking at this, I actually think this might be the same as Emma's, which I didn't clock at the time if not the same it is very very similar you got all the treadle mechanisms in here and then let's see if we can get the lid open so yeah though not the same very similar i actually think mine is newer than hers because this is 1950s and hers was 1930s same cabinet design different machine essentially this machine is really really cool this is actually the same design as my blue singer sewing machine but this one is in black has some lovely engraving plates on it works beautifully i actually got this one for free off of gumtree gumtree yes got this one for free off of gumtree i picked up another machine with it which i did show you in my last sewing machine collection video now the other machine that i was planning on repairing i have actually sold because when you move you have to pick and choose your battles and there are projects like the blue sewing machine that i really really want to do and then there are projects like that one which i was essentially just going to do for the youtube channel which would have been great except i did not have the time the money or the motivation <laughs> we have a serial number of ef996917 this machine i'm really looking forward to using because she is a treadle i think we can have quite a bit of fun with her I really want to try and get a turtle machine that is like rather than a cabinet is like a desk but that is a goal for the long term future when I have my own house and workspace and it's going to be amazing but for now we have this it is fine we are getting there she's going to be packaged up really really nicely and I just hope that everything continues to go well when we get to the other side. This Singer 15k treadle machine cabinet was made in 1950 in Clydebank, Scotland. It was one of 33,000 that were made that year. This beauty works so nicely and she's certainly one of the machines that I think I'm going to get the most use out of my collection and I still cannot believe that I somehow got her for free. Talk about luck. Now if I remember right, this is a machine that I actually unboxed on the YouTube channel and at the time it was not working. Oh, can you tell that I'm utterly knackered from just moving stuff? The reason it was not working guys is because I had the needle in the wrong way around. So she actually sews beautifully. This one is a hand crank but she does have the capacity to be transferred into either a treadle or even an electric. However now she goes nice and smooth. I really really like it. I've actually been looking or I was looking to get a vintage motor to put on this machine. She's actually one of my favourite machines simply because she is this really weird tan colour which is not unusual for vintage machines but it's unusual in my collection. She does have this little case where I think there are some spare needles. One thing that I found really interesting with this machine is she was made just after World War II if I'm remembering this correctly and during that time a lot of planes that were used in World War II were being recycled and so it's very likely that the metal that she is made from because she is made of metal even though she's not made of cast iron is actually recycled planes from World War II which I find insanely cool because that's what the Singer factory could get a hold of to make metal sewing machines and plastic sewing machines at the time just weren't really a thing. Her serial number is EM246284 and she's a Singer 201K which apparently is one of the best machines Singer ever made. They've done quite a few iterations of it over the years. I also really like how this has a locking handle. I believe some of my other machines have this as well where you push it in and it just clicks but then it won't remove until you pull this pin and then it can fold away. I'm also reasonably sure we gave this machine the name of Doris but I need to start leaving notes in there tins to say what their names were otherwise i'll just keep forgetting <laughs> this singer 201k is from 1957 it was made in clydebank scotland and was one of 15,000 machines made that year i brought it in 2021 from a charity shop in banbury so unfortunately i don't know any of its history but it's cool so we'll leave it at that also fun fact at the time these were being sold in the 1950s these were the most expensive sewing machines the singer actually sold costing 20 pounds and 10 cents which was the equivalent of 64 weeks wages at the time and was normally brought on finance similar to how we buy a car today. It's always a good day when I actually can't remember what machine is in the case. I feel like this is one I literally brought and it ended up going straight in the attic for one reason or another. I know it's a singer, I genuinely can't remember what. Um, oh yeah, no, I definitely haven't cleaned that because that is covered in 
Ew, is that mold? The cable's moldy? Oh, that is gross. Oh, it smells as well. Right, okay. Oh, I remember this one because I negotiated with the guys that didn't have the plate and he's like, just use your bank card. And I'm like, that's not how life works. I'm not gonna touch this because it clearly needs a really big clean and I can't do that right this second because I'm in nice clothes and I didn't bring all of <sighs> That is grim. The serial number is EM5258 and it says this is a 99k oh my god that is pungent oh, god. It, has, it, got, it has some accessories so we have no i don't want to touch the cables because they're moldy we have an instruction book the sewing machine accessories oh lots of nice ones got a ruffling foot got some spare bobbins a thimble this is interesting i have no idea what this is i've been doing this a lot lately is what is what is this foot shows that i haven't been using these machines as much as i should have all right guys anyone tell me what this is because i genuinely have no clue and i am very intrigued to be fair other than the mold on the cables it is shiny the decals seem to be in good condition i would say that it looks to be a nice machine if the cables are moldy the electrics might need redoing the motor and the motor belt look like they're in solid condition at the very least the faceplate has grooves rather than any kind of decals and it has this really nice design right that's why i brought it i'm nine percent sure it's because i didn't have a machine with this decal design on. Now, technically I still have this Singer 99K, which was made in 1957, but I will be honest and say that before moving, I did not get a chance to clean it. So I'm not 100% sure whether or not this one's actually gonna be able to come with us. I'm not desperate to keep it, but I would like to if possible. However, that now depends on whether or not I can convince somebody who's still in the UK to clean it up for me, which might be a bit of a task. Is it bad that I don't know what's in this box? Like, I've already had one today that I wasn't sure what it was. I can't remember what this one is either. Let's open her up and see. Oh, okay, this is not a singer. This machine doesn't work. I think I know what's wrong with it. I think that the where the bobbin goes has been put together incorrectly. So I actually want to mend that if I can. This is a vintage Janome. I got it from Orinoco in Banbury and they called me in to see if I could mend it and I looked at it and said, sod it, I'll just buy it broken because I'd never had a vintage Janome before then and I was disappointed that this one didn't work and my plan was to fix it. I totally forgot that I had this which is really just shows how many machines I have. I love it. It looks like a little spaceship. She's so cute. I'm not quite sure what year she's from but it's before they changed their name from New Home to Janome. Though I think if we look there is a sticker that says Janome somewhere. So she was sold at Morrison and Grimsby's LTDs. We have a sew button, a darn button, we have lots of adjustments, a foot pedal. Oh, she's so gorgeous and shiny and nice. I don't know what year she's from, but oh. Also, one thing I love about her foot pedal is it is super round. Like, I don't know if this is a normal thing, but a lot of the foot pedals I see, like the old singers, they have like a literal footprint and then they kind of turn a bit square after that. Whereas this one is circular and I find that really cute. She does have some instruction books underneath here by the looks of things, which is cool. So I actually didn't know those were there. Oh, this is hilarious. Prevent frustration, save temper trouble, money. Save your time and prevent sewing delay by reading this adjustment aid. Oh, someone's clearly used it to test stitch as well runs you through a lot of different problems that you get with your sewing machine and how to fix them how cool is that ah so the serial number is just here it is five six three zero zero seven one one eight Jesus, a little bit heavy. Let's have a look and see what we've got in the box. So we have some elastic, always handy. Spare bobbins, spare needles, a zipper, a seam ripper that looks to be broken. Plastic bag of accessories, yay. And a little bit of thread and a couple of buttons. Now dating this machine was really, really hard. You see, New Home was brought by Janome in 1954. And though this has the New Home brand, it does have a sticker on it that says by Janome, meaning it's definitely after 1954 and I, I think this is a model 532, but I either did not have an instruction book specifically saying that, or I just forgot to say it in the video because I can't make it out from the video clips, I've got to be honest, but it looks like a model 532. If it is, this means that it was likely made in the early 1960s. I think the new home brand was retired by about 1965, definitely the 1970s. So I'm going to date this machine very carefully from sometime between 1960 and 1965, though I can't confirm this, but but we will do more research when I actually get this machine to me and fix it up. And this is our next machine. I have just finished cleaning it up and it doesn't work, which is a shame, but I don't have time to fix it right now. So that is gonna go on the pile. I seem to have a lot of bad luck of 
new home sewing machines just not working for me which is a shame and I'm also hoping it's not a trend because my new machine is also a new home Janome and that one better work because otherwise my YouTube channel is in trouble. So this machine the case was really disgusting I have cleaned it all up the front I love it it just opens like that it is a beautiful machine I will show you all the b-roll from when I actually filmed the video with this so I don't have to unpack it as tis needs to be boxed up for the move but honestly it is gorgeous it is amazing it is going to be awesome when it actually works and i am really looking forward to it i haven't been able to find much information about these machines online i think this might be from the 60s but i'm honestly at this point not 100 percent sure however one thing i have been able to find is that when people list these for sale they always list them as being very strong machines a lot of people say that they can sew through up to four layers of cotton and a bunch of other stuff even thin leather so i have high hopes for this i really really want it to be a machine that can stay out in my workshop regularly but it's one of those things where we need to get her working first she also comes with a full collection of cams with a bunch of fancy stitches however this will be a project to fix up another day and for now she can go back into her box. Much like my other new home machine, this one comes from somewhere between 1960 and 1965, but I can't date her any more precisely. I genuinely think she's going to be a beautiful machine and she's not too heavy. So with this nice carry case, I actually think she'd be a really good travel machine. However, that's only after we fix her. So keep your fingers crossed for me guys, because I have a lot of repairs to do when I finally get to my new place. Okay, so this machine was actually a present. I'm not sure how much they paid for it, but Ari and Curtis got me this as a housewarming present when we moved into our new house last year. Unfortunately, it was in very bad condition. I honestly don't know if it sews. I'm trying to think. I don't think I dared plug it in. Definitely needs a new belt for the motor. The whole thing was disgusting. I've given it a wipe over. I think I probably need to give it another wipe over because there's still loads and loads of dirt. The plastic plate is actually broken. This actually came up when I was researching this machine as one of the worst, if prettiest, machines that Singer had ever made. The entire case, we still have all of the individual pieces. So it's gonna be a thing. I will repair this. I think it will be fine once it's been repaired, but it's just gonna be a pain in the backside. But I'm gonna try and do it at some point. It didn't come with any any accessories it is very cute it is this lovely kind of pearlescent blue that the other blue machine is a very similar one I prefer the other machine it's just it's cast iron you can't really beat it but no I really do like it I really want to use it I'm just needs repairing and it's just motivating myself to actually do those repairs is a little bit of a nightmare sometimes but it's fine it's fine we'll get there for this one the serial number is actually underneath I remember correctly. I swear when I unboxed this on the YouTube channel, it did have a serial number. I just now can't find it. Nope, no idea. It's fine. We're not going to worry about it. Let's just go on with the fun facts about this machine instead. So had I looked under the motor, I would have found the serial number, which is EV770652, as I now went and looked up in my last video where I unboxed this. This machine was made in 1964, and it is a Singer 285K, which is well known as one of the worst sewing machines Singer ever made, but damn it is blue so I suppose we're gonna keep this one. Let's just hope that I can repair it and there aren't any electrical issues as well. This sewing machine is actually Ben's pick. I saw it, sent him a photo as a, hey, look at this. And he was like, you better be bringing that home. So I think if I remember right, it's another one that I got from the shop and I literally haven't seen it since. This is a Singer. Yes, it is. This is a really awesome silver Singer. She is very, very square. I haven't checked how old she is, but she is gorgeous. She actually looks to be in really good condition, not too dirty. I honestly haven't looked around to see how she works. Have at least one bobbin in there. She is electric. Honestly, I don't think I've actually seen a Singer like this before but then I do normally tend to deal with older machines. She's incredibly bulky and incredibly heavy. I cannot see a serial number in an obvious place but that doesn't mean she doesn't have one it's probably just means I need to look harder. I really really like her because we don't know how old she is we haven't come up with a name for her yet so please leave any suggestions in the comments down below. And now for the actual facts overlaid with aesthetic looks at this machine. Okay so we found the serial number but honestly it is nearly completely worn away I can barely read it. I did try tracing over it in pencil but it's so worn away it wasn't even worth with that. I think it's EX635954. Presuming that I've managed to read that serial number right, this is a Singer 188K from 1965 and I have to say she is in beautiful condition so I cannot wait to try her out. And she's also a really interesting colour. I've never seen a sewing machine come in this kind of silver blue before so I am very excited to add her to the collection just because of how pretty she is. So Ben, you chose well. So this machine I have not serviced, I do not know if it works, it is just one of those things. I liked the box so I opened it and we found a vintage Benina, which oh my god 
gosh guys isn't she beautiful you have got a nice little compartment for her foot pedal there is a extension table at the back it doesn't look like she's got any accessories and she is a 707 i don't know how old that would be like literally i have taken this machine out the shop put it here and that is all i have done with it probably gonna have to give the case a bit of a hoover before we leave but oh, just like it's like such a nice vintage suitcase as well i love it i really really do so because i know literally nothing about this machine i'm going to do a bunch of b-roll and i can add the voiceover later once i have had time to research this one a little bit owning a Benina of any kind has been a life goal of mine for a while now as if you've been around sewing machines you'll know that they have a reputation of being the best of the best however they also have a price tag attached to that that makes them unaccessible for most people including me <laughs> however this Benina Minimatic 707 only cost me 20 pound from Orinoco in Banbury and I brought it in 2022 it was made sometime between 1967 and 1971 and I'm hoping somewhere on it is a serial number so that when I finally do get around to fixing up and using this machine I'll be able to date it more precisely this machine is all metal and from what I can find of 707s online they have a very good reputation at being very handy for just about anything you want to sew so I am very excited to give this one a try On the day that I'm filming this, this is the last machine that I'm filming today and the case is broken and it really, really bugs me, but it goes like that. And it's supposed to all lock in and it is what it is. It's from the 1970s, it is an Elna. These machines are actually supposed to be really, really quite good. To be honest, I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna take this one with me. It's the kind of machine that is handy to have around and she does work and she does so really, really beautifully. And I like the case and I like her, but I don't know. We'll see. I think this one might be being left at home, which is a shame, but this may be the only video you see her in. Now, one of the main reasons I brought her and I liked her so very much is simply because of this little storage tray right here. You can't really have this on the machine while you're sewing because there's thread holders at the back here, which would literally stop you from moving. But if you slide it out, which it does do, and then you take this off, it has an entire compartment worth of things. And I just think that is a really, neat thing to have and it's very interesting and very unique i've not seen any other machines with something like that she sews super super nice unfortunately i haven't got any plug sockets to plug her in right now to show you how nicely she does go so this elna tsp is from the 1970s though unfortunately i can't date it any more specifically than that which is a bit of a shame i have actually kept this machine at the moment it's really really good which is a bit of a surprise as this is the only interaction i have ever had with the elna brand which i think is swedish and it is surprisingly impressive or at least this particular vintage machine is also it just looks so retro seeing this foot reminded me why i wanted her i thought she'd be excellent for thread painting This sewing machine is, if you've been watching the channel pretty much since its beginning, you will probably recognise. So essentially when me and Ben first lost our jobs in New Zealand, we came back to the UK. I did not have a sewing machine. And we went over to Ben's nan, who unfortunately is quite unwell, and she could not sew anymore, she couldn't use her machine. I fixed a bunch of clothes for her and to say thank you, she asked if I wanted her vintage singer. I think it's probably the reason Ben got into vintage singers as well. She is an absolute beauty. I actually do have an extension table for her. It's actually in the attic in one of my other sewing boxes. She runs like an absolute absolute dream though she hasn't been used in a little while since i got my janome back that has always been my preferred sewing machine but this one has sat lovingly out in the wings i believe she's from the 1960s but i've got to be honest we never bothered to check because at the time i was using her vintage sewing machines though me and Ben were secretly obsessed with them, just weren't really part of the channel. However, now they are, and I feel she needs to be showed off. If you wanna see more of what she does, please check out some of my early videos. They are leave a lot to be desired, shall we say. However, it just shows how well this baby works and how well Ben's nan took care of her. She's a singer 522. Her serial number is 62661279. So when I read out the serial number, I actually forgot to say the letter that's at the front of it, meaning that I can't accurately date this machine. However, singer 522s were only only made between 1974 and 1977, which isn't too much of a gap to figure out where it's from. This machine has always been my backup machine ever since I started using my big Janome full time. And quite honestly, the only reason I don't have it out more and keep it for just normal straight stitching because this thing is nearly as good as an industrial is simply because of lack of space, which is something that me and Ben want to amend in the future because the, all my machines need a little bit more love but this one in particular. She made me many a cosplays and I plan to make many more on her too. We are going to take a look at my new sewing machine. This is going to be my main one for a while until the other ones arrive. And this is something that Ben picked up for me. Pretty much we saw it listed on Facebook and I just was like, Ben, go get it. And he did. And now, ta-da! 
<laughs> so with this one, let's start with the case. It is plastic and metal with some leather, which is very, very neat. And it has this really cool little compartment out the top, which, oh, it's so cute. And it's really cool because I don't think I've seen a case that actually has that before. Oh, she's beautiful. So I haven't actually had more than a quick glance at her yet. So this is my first time taking a proper look. She is an electric machine with a foot pedal. She is also a Janome. Now, one of the reasons we went with Janome, because obviously my main big sewing machine in the UK was a Janome, and I found it very reliable. They just seem to be really good, which is why we we're keeping an eye out for a Janome or a Benina. Didn't get quite lucky enough to get a Benina, but this thing is absolutely stunning. Got all the stitches along the top. She's also solid metal. You've also got this nice see-through plate at the bottom and the bobbin underneath. And my favourite part of this machine. So you've got the style, which I think explains all of the different stitches that she does, and then underneath that is all of the feet. So we have a full collection here. The only thing I wish she had more of is a few extra bobbins, but that's nothing that we can't buy, so I'm not too upset about that. And honestly, this is just such a unique design. I really, really love it. I haven't tried out this machine, so I'm not 100% sure whether or not she works yet. We'll figure that one out later though. She's probably gonna get her own video, let's face it. But she's pretty damn cool. And while you guys look at her up close, I will let voice over me tell you about this model and how old it is. Now, without giving away too many details, because as I said, she will be getting her own unboxing video I think maybe even next week. This is a Genome XL2 that was made in roughly 1975. Ben won't tell me how much he paid for her, but he did buy her off the Facebook marketplace over in Australia. And this model of machine was the first Genome machine to ever have a built-in zigzag system meaning no more changing of cams. Overall, I think this is quite a unique model and I'm looking forward to playing with her in the future. Out of my entire sewing machine collection, this Singer Magic Tailor is the only one that I forgot to film before it got packed away. So my apologies guys, but we're just going to take some clips from the video that I made about it that I posted earlier last year. The Singer Magic Tailor began production in 1982, though I can't seem to find when it stopped being made. It is a literal mini industrial sewing machine and was mostly sold to tailor shops who would then use it for small repairs and alterations. I brought it for £5 from the Oxfam Superstore in Oxford in 2022, and I found it in the kids section, which is insane insane because this is genuinely one of the best machines I own. It only does straight stitch in one side, has one sewing speed, no foot pedal, and honestly is so simple and easy to use, even a monkey could probably do it. These machines were made in France with an aluminium skeleton and a plastic cover. They use a plastic shuttle bobbin which is also super interesting for a machine that was made in the 80s. And the most fascinating thing for me, the thread is actually mounted inside the sewing machine, making it super easy to transport and use. Overall, 10 out of 10 for this one. I utterly love it and it's certainly one of my more interesting finds. Now, let's start with my Genome sewing machine, which is the machine you guys see me use on nearly every single one of my sewing projects. This machine, I actually didn't buy for myself. Ben got it for me, which is amazing. She is a Genome Skyline S7, which I think has a British name because Skylines actually aren't made in the UK. We got her in New Zealand. So the British name for it is a Genome Outlier 7. I think Skyline sounds a bit better, really. She is the main machine that I use on most of my projects, and I have decorated her with Hannah Alexander cosplay sewing stickers, which I got when I ordered Hannah Alexander's latest cosplay design book. She is computerized, meaning that she has a digital touch screen. She does come with a stylus, but honestly, I don't really like it and I don't use it. In fact, the only thing I use it for is when I don't want to unthread everything, I just want to wind a bobbin from a different piece of thread, and I'll stick it in this screw hole here and then use it to wind the thread from, which is not what it is made for. She has a ridiculous amount of stitches and honestly, somewhat better than others, but all of them are functional. My particular favorite ones are actually the quilting ones, which seem to be really, really good. She is an incredibly strong and very fast machine. I actually never have her up on the ultimate speed setting because, oh my gosh, she just runs when she does that. She has this nice little compartment here where you can keep bobbins, extra feet. Came with a lot of accessories and I haven't brought any more for her but I do want to buy a free motion quilting foot at some point. However, I need to figure out how to free motion quilt on her first because my one try was absolutely piss poor. So the story behind this machine is that in New Zealand, I was using my first little brother machine, which I've actually sold now, which is a shame, but one of those things. And I was getting quite seriously into cosplay, spending a lot of my days off just only doing cosplay. My little brother machine was getting hundreds of hours of sewing a month. And both me and Ben started talking, saying that actually we felt it was about time to upgrade. My brother's sewing machine cost about hundred bucks. It was 
cheap and cheerful, which is exactly what I wanted at the time. However, I was getting to the point where I needed something a little bit more. Now, we had a friend who was running a sewing shop and unfortunately she decided to shut it down. She had agreed to sell us one of her display models. However, by the time we went to pick it up, someone else had actually already claimed it. Now, Ben was disappointed as he'd been hoping to buy me this display model for Christmas and obviously that didn't go to plan. However, our friend had a very interesting proposition. You see, she had sold this machine, which was brand spanking new to an older lady who sadly just days after she brought it passed away. So her husband was looking to return the machine, but as the shop was closing down, they couldn't take the return. So she put Ben and this older guy in touch and Ben went and picked it up. It had been opened and taken out of the box. However, it, they still had all the packaging. So he packed it all away, brought it to me and it had literally never been turned on before. Not to mention that as the guy just wanted to get rid of it, he actually didn't pay full price. I'm not sure exactly how much this machine cost because Ben refuses to tell me. However, what I can say is that he told me at the time that this machine cost more than our car, which is a thing. And I have to admit it is the best and most fancy sewing machine I have. And certainly if I had to get rid of all my vintage ones and just keep this, I would be more than happy to do so. I think this machine is gonna do me for at least the next 20 odd years, presuming that none of the computer issues go. I genuinely could not ask for a better sewing machine. Uh, the only downside to her is that she is ridiculously heavy, which does make transporting her a bit of a pain. But it's fine, you know, we figure these things out and certainly considering a lot of my other sewing machines are cast iron, this one is nothing in comparison. Plus seeing people's faces when they come in, they're like, oh, where's your little sewing machine? They look at this thing and they're like, the hell, it's a beast. So I believe this Janome Skyline S7 was made in about 2019, likely over in Japan. Honestly, it might not be the prettiest machine to look at, but as far as modern designs go, I actually do really like it. It's chunky, it does everything I need, and I can't wait to make even more things on it when it finally arrives in Australia. Also, she sews beautifully, which is the main reason she has stayed my main machine despite all the other ones I've bought. Also because she's incredibly reliable, and I can honestly say that I have never had anything go wrong with her. Touchwood. It's the Annabelle here, and quick guess, guys, how many sewing machines do I have? The answer? 24. Is that an insane number of sewing machines for one person to possess? Probably. Am I getting rid of any more? Definitely not. And with that, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this updated tour of my sewing machine collection. Has it gotten a little bit out of hand? <laughs> yes, it has. Is it really cool and really good fun? Also, yes, so we are not going to complain just yet, especially because, let's face it, it is growing. I also discovered that a group of Singer sewing machines should be called a choir, which, fun fact. So so if you wanted to join me for more cosplay, vintage sewing and vintage sewing machine antics, please do remember to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like and leave any questions or comments that you have down below. I post videos nearly every Wednesday, so until next time guys, have a beautiful day. Bye!